Hello everybody, Reggie Time here and we are playing some 40 and 60 NL Australian dollars No Limit Hold'em on the excellent Pop Bombers Club on the um, PP Poker apps, never quite sure how to say that Triple P Poker, PP Poker, and who knows how you say it um, No, sure plenty of people know how you say it but clearly I don't um, These videos are going to be a lot more um, intensive in terms of my talking about what I'm doing for like the next few videos because my results have been nowhere near where they need to be um, recently. I've been reviewing my play, looking back at why I think this is and um, I'm going to go into that um, during the video but these are going to be much like a kind of a coaching myself sort of series. I'm planning on doing eight videos where I focus really hard on trying to play my best and explaining why I am doing certain things that is as much for myself as it is for for the viewers of this channel and Poker Hobbit's channel so um, hopefully you guys will come along on the ride with us and then um, get involved by hitting the likes the shares the subscribes all those types of things and even more so maybe you'll um get yourselves involved by seeing just how good these games are and just how beatable they are um, and get in touch with us for um, access into what, quite frankly, are some of the some of the best games that you're likely to find anywhere on the internet. To be frank, at, um, the stick Gordon Bennett. To be frank, I'm going on Duesenberg. Um, I'm going to try and stop saying that. So yeah, it's, hopefully it's going to be like educational for me personally um, to look back on and to hopefully articulate why I'm doing the things I'm doing, why I'm choosing to play the hands I'm playing and choosing to fold the hands that I'm folding. Um, so hopefully you guys will get a grasp of how I intend to crush these games over the summer. And hopefully you guys can get involved, sign up, play yourself, hopefully learn something from these videos and, and start crushing them too. Uh, that's the end of the spam. Um, other than to say that these guys who I'm working with now on Pop Bombers really are top draw in terms of their organization their their setup their um their customer service it's it's second to none better than most and um yeah if you are looking for one of these apps to play on but you're nervous because um of the nature of these apps then these guys are as, as trustworthy as, as anyone you'll find out there for sure so um yeah if you have been looking to get into these games then Pause the video right now, get in touch with me or get in touch with the Pop, Gom Pop Bombers guys, set yourself up, then continue watching the video, of course. Um, so, why do I think my results have been less stellar of late? Um, well, one of the problems with these games, and I say problems um, using air quotes, is that the style I've been playing has been leading to... Um, needing to have the best hand at showdown a lot because I've not been successfully isolating players therefore I've been going multi-way pots a lot and then we are as we all know once we get into multi-way pots it's really hard to win pots at non-showdown you just need to show down the best hand and that's been a problem for me and I think it's mostly come about due to my pre-flop strategies which have been more um, trying to play small ball. Um, do, 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 do. Let me see what we're doing here. Let me just have to check that this flop. It's pretty drawy board. I don't expect to get tons of folds on this type of flop. Even from hands that we have, um, like, B, we can, if we'd have bet the flop, say, for example, we'd have been called, we'd have been forced to check a hell of a lot of turns and just get bluffed a lot on rivers or um, forced to pay off thin value bets. No, no, we do the ace twos. Um, so yeah, I think because I've been like raising between two and a half to three x pre-flop, I've been frequently getting into pots so that have like myself and three other players. Once you're in that situation, then you just need to have the best hand. The only times you can be aggressive post-flopper with strong made hands and strong draws. And um, I was finding myself being like way like a little bit too loose pre, not getting players out of the pot, and then having to play like pretty passively post-flop. And that's just not a recipe for, for winning poker. Um, 
so the last day or so across this site and then the other sites that I, the other clubs that I play on at different times of day, uh, I've been significantly narrowing my preflop ranges, increasing my preflop raise sizes, and hoping to get pots more heads up or just against two opponents post flop, so we can then try and play a more normal post flop aggressive strategy that just doesn't work in multi-way pots as well so that's what we're going to be doing today you've already maybe noticed to those you watch the channel a lot that uh, my bet sizings have changed my pre-flop the smallest raise size i use is three and a half x now and um, we're going to be isolating one limper to five x isolating multiple limpers to at least six x possibly more and then my smallest bet size post flop is now um 60 percent pot whereas it used to be one third pot the the small raises small stamp strategy just does not work well in games where um the small raises pre-flop attract multiple callers and then the small bets post flop don't dissuade people from from coming along um often enough they just don't get the folds so i, I think that's a big part of the reason why my results haven't been very good is that i just presume it have been absolutely hemorrhaging red line whilst also finding myself in situations where i'm paying off a little bit lighter post flop um, with good but not great hands in multi-way pots where when people are being aggressive usually you need better than just a good hand you need a great hand to be able to, to call down successfully so yeah I think my um, my pre-flop strategy has been um, mostly to blame for the situations that I've been finding myself in and hopefully we'll get a chance to um, address that in this and future videos so here we have one limper, so we're going to be going to at least um, 5x here, which is um, $3 on this occasion. Perhaps we could have got even bigger out of position. So we're not going to be playing as loosely. We are going to be playing hopefully more aggressively, but we're still going to be opening like ace 5 off from the button. Um, there's not... A ton of three betting in these games, so I'm, I'm comfortable with opening 3.5x and you know not expecting to get too badly abused by aggressive three betting. And check back this flop, and then we're going to start betting some turns and rivers possibly. Given on, on this turn, we're probably just going to go for one street, so we're going to go quite big, just charge single spades, 9x, 4x, 3x, deuce x. 5x etc charge all them to draw or just set the pot down so a lot of this will a lot of what i'm doing in this video will go against a lot of like conventional strategy in in 2020 i mean applying a conventional strategy to these games will work uh, you will definitely make money if you're good at poker playing like a small ball like small raise higher uh, small bet sizes higher frequencies but i'm not sure it works as well as the strategy i'm hoping to employ over the next um over the next two or three weeks but we'll see i guess i'm going to entitle the i'm going to title the, the series something along the lines of how i crush um app poker but Maybe I won't crush it. Maybe I'll just produce a series of videos where I'm not actually crushing and it'll be the most ironic video series ever. But that's going to be the title. Something like that. Win or lose. I'm not going to be making like scores of videos. Only show myself winning. Every session I record, win or lose will be played. I just don't, quite simply don't have the time to record every session and then just cherry pick the best ones. I've never done that. I never will. If I have a session where I just get crushed, then I have a session when I get crushed and it goes up on the channel. Uh, so hopefully... The title will be preemptive, but it might end up being um, quite paradoxical, if that's the right word. King Jack open King Jack off suit isn't always an open for me under the gun. Um, I think in these softer, more passive games, you want to be playing more high cards and making hands that flop good top pairs where you can value bet at least two streets post flop. 
maybe less of the sooty connector stuff and more of the um, pure high card strength. We have been three bit very tiny here by someone who's clearly bad at poker. 37, 18 with a 19-3, but I'll be over a small sample. Defending King Jack off would normally be a fold here, uh, but given he made the, the three bits so tiny, we kind of forced into calling, and then I guess if we make a pair just stacking off, we don't make a pair, so we're just going to have to give this one up. We still don't make a pair. And although it seems pretty clear to me, this fellow has ace high. Um, I don't think we can credibly represent any strong hands here. So I think we're just going to give up. Just bluffing these guys is just not something that's deemed to be too profitable. And as he's just gone all in now, presuming he's either been slow playing something or he's made something on the river. I mean, maybe he was just bluffing, but it seems unlikely given the small three bet preflop. Here we've had two limpers. This would be a decent isolation spot had this guy had a good stack, but the size I'm going to want to isolate to would then put me in a tough spot if he just back raised jammed. So that's why we're not doing it. Here we are going to three bet. Oh, that's too much though. We are going to three bet our um, king queen off. And we're going to choose a larger than usual si sizing trying to capitalize on any pre-flop fold equity we have and also then building a bigger pot for post flop so if we do make a pair um or better the spr isn't going to be too troublesome for us here we have like a 23 7 uh sorry we had a straddle the 23 7 posted and folded here we're just going to make a pretty big squeeze pre-flop versus a straddle and the overcall not going to be playing hands like 5 4 suited. Uh, we've been called for but shoved on by 24 12, which isn't nice, but let's face it, it's a trivial call. We run into the better hand. We won't be running it multiple times, we'll just be hoping to get there, but we've pre reloaded just in case. Spade would be nice, or a jack. Spade, you'll do for Reggie. He really just bet fold that river for like two pence. We we'll have to go back and look at that, but it seemed like he made a huge bet on the river, then was bluffing so hard he couldn't even call like a the smallest all in history. for this guy don't they second time he's got it all in with a dominating hand and lost I won't be crying for him though so we're going to be up to 5x here with the isolation so probably change that 4.5x because it's not a sizing I'm going to need Good flop with the queens. Shame the other guy didn't want to get involved. We had a head. Will we remain that way? No, we won't. And 3.5x might be on the small side. I think maybe we could even um, could even experiment with 
4x being our standard preflop open because 3-betting, we can look around the table see this number here on the hood is the 3-betting stats. We've got a 3, an 8, a 3, a 6 and a 1. Of a 7, a 3, a 7, an 8 and a 2. 2, 20, but that guy's a psychopath. 2, 3, 7. So I think we could even... In fact, we will. We'll, um... We'll go with the four five six on the open side things that does mean we do have to open a little bit tighter but um the fact that my standard raise is going to be four x is going to remind me of that remind me that we need to open tighter um in these games it's not like the sexiest poker but i'm hoping and i'm genuinely feeling it's going to be the most effective poker kind of like you don't want to be creating like really high SPRs in a situation where you're going to be in a like a lot of multi-way pots it's just too easy to make some huge mistakes if we're going to be in like lots of multi-way pots if, we, if people are going to be like just like snap calling 4x opens with with abandon then um you want to be in situations where you can just like flop a pair a strong pair and just like commit to your hand let's try and get it in bad this time maybe that will work out better for him looks like it has nope nope it didn't work out any better for him Poor guy just got buffeted and battered all over the place, didn't he? Couldn't win for love or money. 5x ISO over the Olympia. Looks like we might still get called in every spot. No, the actual limper folded and everybody else, the other two places had to call and we get a pretty diabolical flop. Uh, and we're just going to fold and see what this guy's donking with. So we still have people at 5x calling 9, 10 off and 10, 8 off. Um, which tells me that we're in very good games. And that's two people out of position who put raises in with like offsuit 10x's. So we're loving the games. Hopefully we're going to love our results at the end of all this. We can't fold this flop. It's just too dynamic. Um, you can have two pairs, etc. of course, and some sets possibly. Ball is just way too dynamic. He checks the turn. He tells me he could have a hand like King Jack. Um, that he was raising for value. Maybe he's a bit more scared now. Maybe he had draws that he's scared with. Uh, we're not going to bet here, of course. We're just going to check back and play some rivers. That is not a good river. Any draw on the flop has now pretty much got there. King, Queen, 8, 9, spades. Probably like one of the worst rivers we could have seen. And we just have to concede the pot, but... His line it did look like a draw when he when he raised the flop. Maybe on that board we would have been justified in just ripping it in. But um when twenty three sevens check raise, I mean they're not doing it super light. I mean draws some very strong draws are gonna be at the bottom of the range you would imagine. We were supposed to have had like ace eight suited there, which would have been a pretty rank hand to get it in against. He'd have had a lot of equity against our two queens. Got to be patient in these games, and that's again that's something that I've kind of been doing well. Setting off sessions, being patient, and then um, towards the middle and end of sessions, my patience has been kind of thin on the ground. The frustration set in, and I've just got sloppy. That's kind of what's been happening recently. I've not been like running great, and I'm not making excuses because it is what it is, and. 
we all go through spells where we don't run great. But if we don't run great and then we compound that by like, losing focus and starting to make some pretty sloppy mistakes, then it just makes a bad situation worse. Here we flop two pairs. I'm just going to start by betting. I'm going to hope to see a clean run out. That is not a clean run out, but we do now have four fifths of a royal flush. with the 15 big blind 3 bet here. Uh, we're going with... Let's just take our time. Let's make sure we don't make any mistakes. Fold in there, fold in there. And we're going to bet a size where we can just jam turns here. Oh shit, I thought we were in against this guy. Look at the wrong player. Bad Reggie. I was looking at this guy thinking we were playing against that stack and we were only playing against that stack. Doesn't matter because he folded anyway. But I don't know if we were playing against that stack or would just have jammed. It's currently 11.04 a.m. in the UK. I'm planning on making this a two video session. I think the best time to on this set is usually in the afternoon, but I wanted to make the videos today and I am working today from 1 p.m. until 8 p.m. So it's going to be my best chance to make videos on Pop Bombers today. We've been donked into here. Uh, we're just going to raise and get it in because... He's got a rubbish stack size to do it. We can't just call and then just fold turns. I want to see all five cards here. We know we're going to be behind, but um, we were going to hope we weren't that far behind, but we are. Isolate and the ace nine suited on the button. We pick up a flush draw and we get there with everything. We get there with the straight and with the flush. We've isolated ace nine suited on the button versus a loose passive player and flopped. A decent draw. And yet, Colby get a pretty crummy turn barrel, um, card to barrel on turns. This guy falls to see that's 47%, which is pretty high on this site. So we're just going to try and realise our equity here. Uh, I mean, doesn't look like he has a queen. Our line doesn't really rep anything, though. If we bluffed again here, it wouldn't make sense. We wouldn't have any hands that would you want to check bet check here for sorry bet check bet for value here. Maybe some Queen X. Like I'm not like a Queen Jack or something, but I think we're just gonna give up. And there's no way in hell he was ever folding that hand. I mean if we just triple there, I don't think he folds. If we just go bet bet bet. Don't think it has a high success rate. Not opening the S5. This guy's as I've got many chips in the big blind. And this guy in the button's got like a stack where he can just jam any two and just if he does and then it makes it awkward if other people come in. Just trying to be that little bit tighter. S5 suited on the button with full stacks behind it's only the cutoff with full stacks behind is a completely standard open. But um I wasn't feeling it there. We are trying to make... Well, we're not trying to make. We're trying to play very, very tightly. Um, so here we have a... 37... 34-11 has opened under the gun. Very loose passive player has... <coughs> well, a very loose player has called on the button. I think we just want to go with the squeeze here. And just, like, commit against this guy. Do not want to be playing a multi-way pot out of position. Even with a hand as strong as Ace-10 suited. Happy to take it down pre. Happy to just gamble with this guy. Well, we're going to be behind now almost surely, but we're going to have some equity, you would hope. Oh no, we're actually ahead. Will we stay that way? It's a good start. No blue's a good start. Yes, happy days.
didn't realize we've popped two pair over here on table one <coughs> i was kind of focused on the ace 10 suited shenanigans and actually then i bet the turn which is a terrible card to bet on well played reg couldn't have played this hand any worse it's not the way to do it when you're trying to make instructional videos is it yeah uh, i'm gonna leave this table now we've got 31 11 30 i mean it's not a terrible table by um normal poker site standards but it is a pretty rank table by pop bomber standards and hopefully this one will improve soon again by no means a terrible standard a 24 5 and a 43 20 actually it's just broken so that's a bummer and we'll pause the video in a moment while i pull up two extra tables don't want to be wasting valuable screen time by um searching for tables in the lobby so leave this table pause the video so we have some more tables now this is a table i've started from scratch i'm not sure how good it's going to turn out but um our friend hobby poker has joined so maybe he's got the intention of fucking with me who knows I'm not in contact with him right now. He's um, just clearly seen me on the grind and decided, let's go and get involved. We five X'd here in a 60 L game where we got three callers and we completely missed. So we are done. We five X because this guy posted. that we would have made the nuts on the river but never mind Fifty-four thirteen here called our 5x open at the small blind EC bet not much intention of folding to a 54 13 not too many two pairs out there Lots of top pairs out there and draws, etc. It leads the turn for small. Just really frustrating line. Just don't think he's bluffing here when he does this, so I'm just going to fold. And he was bluffing. Well, well, well. And makes no sense whatsoever, but it's worked for him. That's quite, quite annoying. To say the least. And that just makes no sense at all, does it? That's to annoy me a little bit. Those are the types of things where um, I've been knocking me off kill through my sessions because I've just been like, that is just so weird and so bad and so annoying. Um, so, yeah. Need to make sure it doesn't happen during this video. Having a meltdown on video wouldn't be great, would it? Sadly here the whale busted, hopefully he'll reload on this table. Won't be looking wonderful, but we won't be leaving a 61 slash 9 with a full stack. That's one thing we won't be doing. 
I mean, this player on the button is probably a decent regular, I would guess, isn't it? His stats are at least a reasonable regular by this club's standards, but we have a 45 22 on the button as well, so it's not like it's a, a table that we don't want to be at. It's 3.5x from the small blind rather than 4x. Hello, Cowboys. Snap calls. Snippety, snappity, sue. That is a fantastic turn. He snap called the flop too. If he's got the Jack-9 or the Ace-Jack, then delighted for him. Snap call, snap call, fold with the Eight of Spades. Thank you, sir. Different whalers joined us. We love to see it. Lots of purple here, not a lot of chips in front of them, but Tons of purple, which is always nice. Love to see the ace five getting the double. <coughs> we love to see that. <clears throat> Two overs and a flush draw here. Just going to be raising. Trusting our equity. Pretty diabolical turn card. But given his bet called the flop, he can have some worse draws. <clears throat> he can certainly have some good shots, some straight draws, some worse flush draws. Um, and was, yeah, if we get called by 8x, then we're not in great shape. But doing well against the rest of it. Um, how many times do you want to run it twice? We have what 35 percent. Yeah, fuck it, we'll run it twice. He snaps it off on the flop on the first run, and we win on the second run. Pair and a flush draw here, no reason to bet. Not going to get anyone to fold a worse hand very often. Better hand, sorry. <coughs> and we have enough equity where we can, even the versus that size, we can check call. Pretty rubbish turn, so now it's time to just go away. Oh, 
and we're not going to bluff the river. We don't need to bluff, we do have some showdown value. And he's never going to fold a better hand. Over bit to gate, he'd gone. I, mean, I almost want to call this. He's gone bet, over bet, check, over bet. But how often do people over bet twice in a hand and just not have a strong hand, especially fish? I just don't think it's a thing often enough to make spurious like calls like that. Some action on this table. Everyone's all in. A pair version, no pair version of flush draw, and flush gets there. Two whales in the blinds. We're going to try and get away with one here with a looser, unusual open from middle position. Sadly, the bottom comes along, which is the last play we wanted to come along. flop for our hand and then um, firmly in give up mode. I'm going to say I expect this player to lead a lot after it checks through. Interesting to see what the button turns up with here. Queen chooses not to value bet the river, which I find quite extraordinary given the line the whale took. It's just a slam dunk value bet on the river. Cry if you get check raised, but I think you just I think we can't you can't be missing value like that, I don't think. I mean you beat these games by making good thin value bets versus weak players. You don't beat these games well by checking back hands that are going to be good the vast majority of the time. Just the all in from the button here. Eh? Just the casual 40 odd big blind open rip. Congratulations, sir. You've got your moron badge. Do we isolate the King 10 suited here? Not anymore. And I don't think we call it either out of position. Maybe we should. I'm a little bit gun shy out of position at the moment. 
is probably something that I need to work on a little bit as it happens that hand it wouldn't have done us any favours to to go and gamble with the dude 100 blind steep it's a slam dunk call 50 blind steep it's way less attractive here we're going to do 6.5x versus the two limps with a very pretty hand get a pretty rancid flop again we're just not flopping well are we we're just not flopping well and he bets a turn I mean, this has been like um, the story of my to go one direction the story of my life recently in poker I mean the guy's just got it so fair play to him but <laughs> um, just playing tighter playing good hands and then just not connecting it is remarkably frustrating but um it is what it is i mean it's, it's just one of the challenges in playing in much tougher games no we can't open this because of that guy's stack one of the one of the um, challenges of playing in much softer games is that you are just going to be kind of hamstrung on a lot of boards there's just not going to be an awful lot you can do when you miss Unless you flop decent equity, which is why like, high cards and suitedness is so important. So when you do flop and miss, but flop draws, then um, you know you, you've got you've got a chance. Whereas if you like flop, if you're constantly raising like your five, six, four, five, seven, eight types hands, there's just going to be um, not that much, not anywhere near as much chance of you being able to find spots where you can value bet multi streets or bluff effectively called here by 12 slash 4 in the blind I mean we just need to see bet versus this to be two over well one over card I guess I've seen one of them for a while on this Club 12 slash 4. How many hands is that over? Ah, not many. Not many. Not folding here to any raises of any kind. The pocket 7s, if he's got the 8, then he gets a double up, I guess. squeezing the ace 10 if this guy gets any callers but when he gets them in three bet I think we can let the ace 10 go no fucking clue what min three bets people have but hopefully we'll have fun finding out my wife being very noisy downstairs with the Tesco delivery man, she needs to keep her fucking voice down or she'll be getting a black eye. Of course she won't be getting a black eye by the way, but um Yeah, probably shouldn't have said that, but it's not true. I don't beat my wife. Oh look at that, we would have smashed it with our ten, but never mind. Deserve that for making a casual joke about domestic abuse, I guess. What is going on? Shop it up, boys. That's nice to see. Oh, no, not that flop. 
Oh no. Oh no. So we're going to play these pocket nines, then we're going to call it a wrap for this video. We're going to squeeze up the pocket nines as well. Maybe that's not big enough, just 10.5 lines. We've just seen this guy min 3 bet with ace 8 suited, so we're not going to be giving his min raise under the gun a great deal of credit. Dude, video to finish. Get out of me pot. Oh, now we're going to play the queens in the straddle pot on table two. We've been called four bet by our friend here, which is remarkably alarming. Can't seem a big fan of his sizing, but whatever. I mean, cold, cold here. Very much like this guy to do something crazy. He doesn't. He got a decent flop. Bit big flop, jam turn, or just call flop. Ah, this way. Ah, this fine. Not running it three times. And we win. So that's a nice way to end the video. Um, hope you guys have enjoyed it. Stay well. Stay safe. Look after each other, be kind, all of those things. And um yeah, not sure when the videos will be going up on Poker Hobbit's channel, but the video following this will be up in approximately two days. I'm gonna try and stay like, like day on day off, day on day off, day on day off with this mini series and hopefully get it whacked out in in a couple of weeks. And um yeah. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. It's been a little bit nitty, a little bit different. We haven't ran great, but um, yeah, don't forget if you've got to the end of the video, you haven't hit the thumbs up yet, please do. And um, yeah, look out for the next one coming really soon. Bye for now, everyone.